Hello everyone, this is Carrie, the artist who creates Scariosity's art dolls. In this video I'm doing uh, something a little bit different. I'm showing you the collection of dolls that I made for a convention this year. So I put together this collection specifically for the Mad Monster Party in South Carolina in 2017. We just love to go to this convention and we've been going there every year since they first started coming to the Carolinas. I think it's been like five years ago that they started. Um, but this is the first year that I got a table to display the dolls as an artist or vendor. So I thought I would walk through each doll and tell you a little bit about how I created the piece. So the first one here, this is uh, um, Wednesday Adams, which I created with a Twyla. And I think it was the Twyla from the Freak Du Chic collection because her skin's a little bit more grayish purple than the usual purple that Twyla looks like. So I rooted her with alpaca, the alpaca yarn that I typically use. If you want more information on root, my, how I root my dolls, you can check that out in my reroot video. So the dress I created using some just black cotton fabric and the collar and the uh, detail at the wrist was using some lace. The nylons I made using actually a wig cap. I um, purchased some wig caps because they're like a nylon material so they look like nylons. They're a little bit sheer but they're a little thicker than nylon so you can actually sew them. So I made the nylons to pull all the way up. They're kind of like tight so they go all the way up around her waist. It was difficult to paint this one because I couldn't give her the usual blushing to the cheeks like I usually do, so I really had to restrain myself from wanting to give her some like shimmer highlights and stuff because Wednesday Adams just doesn't look like that, so it was a little difficult to make her more goth looking, but I think I did it. And the hair I just uh, brushed into two pigtails and braided them of course all the way down to the ends and used some black mini rubber bands to hold them. So this next one is also uh, completed using a Twyla. She is the regular Twyla. I'm not sure what version but she has the usual light purple skin or lavender. So the dress I created, I actually used some extra fabric from my sister's wedding. Um, I was a bridesmaid and so I, she, my sister had given me some extra fabric to make me some accessories and I actually just saved some of that and I used it for this dress because it was the purple color or the perfect color. But you can't really tell here, it's more of like a peacock blue, but it looks pretty dark I think in this video. I did some like ruffling of um, the back is, is kind of like a bustle that's attached with snaps and so it kind of ruches up I think is the word and I put some lace around the ed edges. I tried to do some couture stitching, <laughs> I can't say that word, but I've been trying to learn since I sew everything by hand I've been trying to learn some stitches online on how to, to do couture stitching so you can do like a bit invisible stitching and stuff. So I don't know how well I accomplished it, but I tried my best. <laughs> um, I was pretty happy with the face up here. You can see the little teeth and I gave her like a little bit of purpley and yellowy kind of blushing underneath the eyes and I just was really happy with how she turned out. So the hair of course is my favorite part of this. It took me a few tries to get the tight curls and what I ended up using was some q-tips and I used some like unscented hair gel and wrapped them around a q-tip like in a corkscrew shape and held them with some clips and I let them dry for probably a day uh, maybe even longer and when I took them out it had those really tight curls so here I'm just holding up the two Twyla dolls next to each other so you can see the difference in skin tone
Next up is Daenerys Targaryen, and this is one of the, probably the maybe the fourth Daenerys doll that I created. This one was done using, hmm, now I can't quite remember. I think it was a Blondie Locks doll. Um, I, you can see uh, the video, face-up video for this is one of my more recent face-up videos that you can see that process if you want to tune into that, that one. So I just used the usual alpaca yarn, and because her hair in the show kind of has that wavy texture, I just didn't have to flat iron it or anything. And I just pulled it back with a couple of braids. Her outfit I made with some sample fabric. So just a tip out there for some cus uh, customizers to order some sample fabric because you can get it pretty much free from a lot of fabric stores and they're just the right size for a doll. So that's, I think the top was done using the sample fabric and then the leather kind of look for that skirt. I did some ink dyeing to some uh, like off-white or uh, khaki colored uh, flannel. And that section in the front is also done with some sample fabrics. I think it's like upholstery fabric. I use some sort of like, uh, what is it called, floss for cross stitching, I think. I braided that up and used it for around her neck, for that to attach around her neck. And then the belt, I attached some beading and some like coppery gold gem things. <laughs> I think, I guess they're called studs. That was a very poor explanation. But so I, I glued on one row of them with some fabric glue like for embellishing fabric and then I also sewed on some beads. So you can probably tell I really like Daenerys as a character. She's one of my favorite Game of Thrones characters. Her boots, I think they were some maybe Draculara or uh, I'm not sure, but they were just some black or some purple, I guess, boots that I customized. I just uh, layered on some uh, some layers of sealant and then painted them with chalkboard paint. I love to use chalkboard paint because it doesn't chip like some craft paint will. Oh yeah, the tights, I also gave her a pair of tights and I used uh, some headbands from the dollar store. So I love to use, I use all new fabrics, like I don't reuse something like an old shirt or something. I would never do that. I, I purchase all new products or all new fabrics for my dolls, but I often will repurpose fabric, so I'll, you'll, it'll be nothing to see me buying a shirt specifically to tear it up and use it on a doll. <laughs> but what I did with these tights is I used uh, headbands from the dollar store. I like, like to cut those up and make tights out of them because they're that stretchy material and they just tend to work well. So I gave her the lavender eyes, like from the comic. She doesn't have lavender eyes in the movie or in the TV show but I like to give her lavender eyes because that's from the books and or comics. So this is one of my favorite. It's um, Morticia or Lily Munster. <laughs> Sorry. And she's from the Munsters, of course. And I am really happy with how this turned out. It's one of, uh, actually speaking of buying and use, using fabrics for or repurposing fabric. This, I purchased a shirt specifically for, actually this was for, an, the shirt was purchased for another doll and I had some leftover fabric for it. It was like silk. So it was like a raw silk and it was just the perfect fabric for this. So, and it, and it you're able to have like raw edges without it fraying too much. And the fray actually looks good on this. And then I used some, not floss but just kind of a twine for the detail around the waist and some lace around the collar. This is done using a Spectra von der Geist doll. 
Her hair was rooted with alpaca yarn. And again, check out my reroute video if you'd like some more information on how I root them. But this one, I flat ironed the hair and gave her her signature gray piece in the front. And I also tried to do the invisible couture stitches on this dress. So I was getting a little bit better, I think, with that. So that's Lily Munster. Oh, and the face up was, uh, I guess I didn't do anything in particular other than I normally do. I used my typical pastels and gave her some shading around the eyes. I made sure she had that particular look to her lips like she does in the show. I usually use a photo for reference. So this doll isn't a character in particular, I just it made it in kind of the classic style of the Marie Antoinette kind of dolls that I like to make. When I was little, I had this book. Of, it was a Cinderella book. And the C Cinderella and her sisters and everyone in the book had these beautiful, huge hairstyles. And they had all these extra detailing to their corsets. And they looked like Marie Antoinette style. And I that was my favorite, favorite favorite book and I just wanted to just jump into this book and I've always thought about it and now that I'm making dolls I like to make them to kind of remind me of that book it was just a really neat book and I actually have it now I I actually went and purchased it on eBay <laughs> but anyway um so when I make these dolls that's kind of why, where that came from this one in particular, I wanted to make like a Marie Antoinette kind of ghost. She was done using the Airy Hauntington doll, which is one of the new Monster High uh, dolls that have the new body shape. And I just loved it. I love her, like, I loved Spectre Vondergeist, but I think I like Ari Hauntington even more. She has like a beautiful, her skin is, is like opaque, but it's very cloudy looking, so it looks like very ghostly and she it did very well with the pastels so I gave her this pink pastel colored hair and I tied it up into that style and then attached it with a rubber band in, in pink and then I used the same curling technique that I used on the Twyla doll earlier where I curled it up with some q-tips and hair gel and then let it sit for about a day and dry. The corset and the arms are made with a pink vinyl and snaps they snap in the back and then her bustle is kind of bustled out on the sides to give that you know Marie Antoinette style dress look where the hips are really big and they snap on so you can actually take off the skirt and just have the little lingerie looking outfit underneath i wanted to make the shorts i wanted to make the shorts and the corset look very fitted so if you did remove the skirt that it would look like lingerie and i think i achieved that i added some like lace embellishments around the top and front of the dress or the corset and I added some ruffly lace to the ends of the arms to look like a ruffle at the elbow. And then her shoes, I'm not sure what doll they came from, but I just customized them, uh, painting them a pink color to match the rest of her look.
Also with the bustle, I ink dyed it. It was actually just like a white, um, it wasn't tulle, but I think it was like an organza. Maybe it was uh, kind of softer than organza, so I'm not really sure what the fabric, what kind of fabric it was, but I ink dyed it with some pink ink and water, and then I shot it with the heat gun to sort of wrinkle it up and um, kind of burn it a little bit just to give it like that ghostly effect. So it just looks kind of crinkled. I believe that they're Spectra Vondergeist shoes. The pink, the like they're they started out being like a hot pink, and then I coated them with some sealer, and then painted them with some white craft paint, and then sealed them again. Her face up was done with the usual materials with the watercolor pencils, the Mr. Super Clear sealer, and pastels. So I think this may be the last one for this video, and this actually is a doll that I made last year for a smaller convention that we did in Hickory, North Carolina and it's Squirrel Girl. It's one of my favorite characters and I just really wanted to do a version of her with a Ever After High doll. So this is my version. Her tail I made with some faux fur and some stuffing and then I put some wire in it and attached it to her back. Her outfit is made with a couple of different kinds of brown faux leather and her hair is a like a orange alpaca and I gave her some orange coloring to her face and added some felt ears with some wire to the top of her head. In the comic, her she's wearing tights and I tried to do that with this one. It just didn't look right, so I scrunched them down to make them look like leg warmers and I like how that turned out. And I customized some, I think they might be Twyla boots <laughs> and I made them to look like just um, some like combat or hiking boots. And then I also made this little stand for her because she, with that tail she wouldn't fit into a regular stand. So I decided to make a, one out of an Ever After High um, stand and I added some like faux brass to it and made a little acorn. <laughs> so I'm really happy with her, but she's part of my uh, convention exclusive collection. I have a couple of dolls that I'm only selling at conventions. One of them sold already, but this is one of just a couple that I'm doing at conventions only. So anyway, that's it for part one of this three-part video series of me walking through the collection. I hope you'll check out the others. They'll be posting soon. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave it in the comment section below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to be notified of future videos, please subscribe. And you can check out my work also on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.